it's half past six in the morning and I'm up. I need to go and make sure that Julia's all right. Although I don't know wake her. She's not really a morning person. However, a bit foggy this morning. But waking up with this concophony of sounds again. I, of course, I've woken up here before in Ian's field on my own. Different time of year. In the distance, you've got the roar of the of the road and the occasional car. Here's one coming. Might see it by the gate. I don't know, flashing by. Somebody, somebody there. Ground wet now. It was all very dry when we went to bed. Got very cold in the night, as you can imagine. Um, but I was all right, so survived. Beautiful sounds, just can't get over the actual sounds this morning. It's just, oh. It makes me really want to have a piece of land somewhere, somewhere, a piece of land so that one can wake up to this. Something that you miss in the town, it's just so beautiful. can't even begin to count the number of different birdsong I can hear. I know that one. Wood pigeon. No. Woodpecker. <laughs> Wood something. It's fantastic. Very creepy with the, the mist though. Creepy? Kind of. Usually I say magical, so why not creepy this time? <laughs> creepy, magical, hmm, yeah. It is amazing. Blooming cold though. You sleep all right? Yeah, thankfully we bought a ton of blankets. Very well, no, beautiful. No, beautiful. no well here. No well, unfortunately. And when one of the things we're going to need to do is to ask the lovely Ian for some water. Yes, get some water. Um, hang on, I just need to move you that way because you're a bit out of frame. It's getting brighter. It's a very not that I'm complaining. Very beautiful morning. It's what is it? Not even nine o'clock yet. Nope. And uh, mist, fog this morning. Beautiful, gone. And we've just taken it easy a little bit this morning before yeah. Ian arrives. I'm going to get some breakfast in me. I've got some muesli. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Are you a breakfast person? Um, normally, not particularly, but I think I need to today if I'm going to sustain myself. I think so. Good idea. So. Um, Sorry, I'm squinting. No, that's all right. Uh, welcome to today's video. Obviously there's been bits before but we haven't really done a welcome or anything. No. Welcome to uh, today's video in Innsfield. In the lovely little village. Population currently two. Near Lys. Um, Lots of lovely facilities here. Yes, there's, there's um, public uh, toilets <laughs> for, well, they're private toilets actually. Yeah, private. Uh, it was cold last night. It was cold and it was quite significant this morning seeing the difference. Because when you got up and did a bit of filming, it, I kind of roused and I was like, oh, I was going to see what he's doing. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he up to this time? Who's that man? Because, I mean, you could whisper at the other end of the field and you'd hear it. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear me snoring? 
No, you, I don't think you do snore. I've I don't snore. I don't think I've ever heard you snore. I breathe through my nose. I don't snore. <laughs> Um, but no, the significance between the cold of night, you know, this time of year, there's, there's the two types, the times of year, the, the spring and the autumn, when um, yes, yeah, this is significant difference it between night time and, and daytime, where you know as soon as the sun comes out and starts. I mean, it's warm now, isn't it? Yeah, it's not yeah. nine o'clock, and the heat of the sun. If it was cloudy, it would be different. But the heat yeah, of the yeah. sun. And I, I would have my coat on if the sun was not shining yeah. on us. And the cacophony, I mean, it's, I, I, was, I said this before, it just makes me want to buy a field and live in a field with this nature all around instead of the cars and the people and the arguments and the horns and the town. I just want a house in the country. Mm -hmm. Oh God, somebody's got the camera out already. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, how are you? Not too bad. Come to check we're still here. Oh, I have, yeah. Well, I don't think you'll be able to get out very easy. No, it's true. <laughs> are you all warm up in the van? Yeah, we've got yeah. loads of cold. Yeah, 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 it went cheap. But yeah. there's now plenty of blankets. Right, oh, let's go. Go around. Right, good. There we go. We're in. enjoyed that. <laughs> that was a little bit fun. Yeah. <laughs> Immensely fun. You've never uh, tried, never driven a tractor before? No, it's my first time driving a tractor. And, uh, I hope it won't be the last. So we've got to get her on with the rotavator later on. Get the rotavator on there and get her to do it on that one. Get, mm -hmm. a, get her to put her to work. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's, that's the key right. thing, exactly. isn't it? That is, that is the thing. You should, uh, you've got to, got to do some work. So mm. we'll get you Maybe cutting some grass later on if we can get the big one out. So uh, we'll see if we can go back and get that one. I was practicing doing the lines. You are, yeah, so. yeah. They, 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 I can see you've obviously had a drink last night. 
<laughs> well, I went round a, a clump and then I was like, well, I might as well keep going round that clump. At least clump, you didn't crash you know. it. I mean, somebody else crashed it. You know, <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm not mentioning any names whatsoever. Oh, no, I knew you. No, 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 no. Because no, 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 we wouldn't mention any Richard names. Oh, dear. No, no, we wouldn't mention any Richard names. We wouldn't mention any Richard names. Well, we're heading out to Alton, not Alton Towers, which is a different place and miles away and uh, doesn't have the same kind of finesse as Alton in Hampshire. Ian's taking us, aren't you, Ian? Oh, Very man. kindly. Yeah, right. yeah, We're right. burning up his expensive uh, diesel or petrol. Lucky or, enough, this one doesn't use too much. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> and Julia's in the back there. You all right in the yeah. back there, Julia? Mm, all right, back here. Yeah, this is the Fred Flintstone version. We have to actually walk, don't we, like that? Yes, yeah. we pedal it. <laughs> Lovely countryside. We've just been through Selborne, where Gilbert White's house is. He of the, what's the name of his book? So the, the, um, natural, the natural the, history of Selborne. That's it. Like, the, exactly. Uh, so the he was one of the first ecologists, was he? That's right. Yep. That's all lavender fields yet. That's always worth seeing. Right. Take you up to where your brother, brother lives as well. Nice old fetch. We just stopped off on the way to Walton at a place called Chawton, which is um, the home of Jane Austen's house, so which is the house behind me. I just thought we'd have a quick look at that. It's a beautiful house. She didn't exactly have a small, humble house. It was uh, very large, isn't it? Lovely red brick house. Sorry, say it. I think it was owned by a brother, if I remember rightly, for the story. I think that um, the story, yeah, the story of, of the brother. I think the brother's big. It's got a big house up the top there. Oh right. So we'll go and have a quick look at that later on before we just peer off. Oh well, blimey! But, uh, yeah, I think he got it for. for uh, There's a wall here. I think with all the main characters from Jane Austen's books. So you've got Eleanor Dashwood, Emma Woodhouse, Catherine Morland, Fanny Price, Mr. Darcy, Captain Wentworth, all the names that you hear. Uh, I haven't read any of her books, I'm afraid to say, so they mean nothing to me. But the top one is Jane Austen, 1775 to 1817. It wouldn't be the other way around, would it? That, on the other hand, is much more the kind of house I'd love to live in. Big old thatch thing. 1550 it was built, so it says above the door. Much, much more humble. Although in its day, of course, would have cost an absolute fortune. And it would have been all timber frame. What do you think, Julian? It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Absolutely sunny, it's really, Picturesque. Picturesque. And here we are in the Easter holidays and it's, you know, mid-morning, barely anybody around, it's just lovely. us. Have you and seen? And that retrobate at the back there. Yeah. <laughs> retrobate. Is he, uh... Seen the cat up there. Oh yeah, there's a yeah, cat on the roof. cat on the roof. Welcome to Alton. That wasn't the view I was expecting. No, a demolition site. Demolition site, and I don't know what that's chucking smoke out or steam mm. or whatever. I think it's. Anyway, that's uh, not why we're here. We're here to see that, the story that was, that of. Was Bass Brewery. Bass Brewery, and they're turning into houses now. Yeah. It was Bass Brewery, yeah. We're, um, we're actually here to uh, find out the story of. Sweet Fanny Adams. Who? Sweet Fanny Adams. You mean we're not going to do anything? We're just here for Sweet Fanny Adams? What, that's, what the... Yeah, that's a good point. The fact that her name means nothing. Literally means nothing. And it's quite sad because she was a very unfortunate young eight-year-old English girl. 
from Fanny Alton. Adams from Alton. And murdered. Murdered in on the 24th of August, 1867. Blimey. And we're going to try and find her grave yes. and tell a bit of the story. Yeah. Come with us. But come on then, don't muck about. into the um, Curtis Museum yeah. in Alton just because um, in here is some information about Sweet Fanny Adams but also of course some wonderful exhibits of the history mm. so uh, if ever you're in Alton just to say pop in it's free to it's get free, in free so put a little donation in and yeah. we're all good and we're all good and we've just been looking at the Alton buckle which is a Saxon buckle and uh, it's rather it's, stunning it's quite rare. Apparently, that one's not for sale. Sorry about <laughs> it. Right. Yeah, but lots of um, fascinating and interesting things. But we don't have the time in this video to show you everything. Wonderful hunting season. It's a beautifully laid out museum, I have to say. Look at all these old tools, building materials from the Tudor period, for example. Just stumbled across the, um, the the display here of the willful murder of Sweet Fanny Adams. We'll let um, Julia tell the story once we get over to the graveyard. I think. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a very sad, sad story. But it's great that it's here on display in the museum. We're at Alton Church now. Alton Church uh, is a church that appears in one of my videos called Crumbling Churches. And somewhere in the middle, I'll put a link to the video, somewhere in the middle I'm interviewing uh, Julian Humphreys about this church during the English Civil War in which there was a dreadful massacre, a nasty skirmish took place here. Julian explains it incredibly well and in great detail, this, this, um, this minor battle, but the massacre that then followed. Um, suddenly I just went, oh, wait a minute, this is Alton Church, I've been here. So we're now looking for, I think, an additional churchyard, not quite sure where it is, to find a sweet Fanny Adams grave. I've got directions. Oh, good. Let's go. Yeah, I'm following you. After a little bit of walking around that we found in an additional cemetery um, her grave. So Julia let me just get a bit closer. Let's uh, find out the story then of sweet Fanny Adams. Well she was playing in the hop fields near her home with her sister Lizzie and her friend whose name escapes me at the moment, something Warner, and they they were approached by Frederick Baker, who was a solic solicitor's clerk, and he tried to bribe them with some money, the sister and the friend, to leave Fanny with him. They wouldn't, so he tried to bribe her to come away with him. She wouldn't, so he just grabbed her and ran. Um, and then... Um, when they came back, the other yeah. two came back, 
they were known to have um, the, the mother, was it the mother? One of them recognised and said, where's Fanny in the That's group? That's right. Because um, it, it wasn't noticed straight away, if, according to one of the stories, that I, a particular story I read. But the point is, um, they eventually realised that Fanny was missing, um, the, the adults, and they, they went to look for her. And they found Frederick Baker walking away from the site. They didn't realise at the time. You know, what you have you been up to? The hop garden, was it? Oh, the, yeah, the hop fields. Um, and he said, I've been doing nothing, I'm up to nothing. Um, hence, sweet Fanny Adams now means nothing. But also, what had he been doing? He had been savagely, brutally um, killing her. Um, he, dismem he dismembered the body, didn't he? And yeah, then and it was actually a fellow who found her head, I can't remember the name of the fellow, but uh, on two hop poles. So he decapitated her, cut her head off and stuck it on two... Um, I don't know how he got it up there because they're quite tall, aren't they? They are tall, hot poles, but I mean, I was maybe thinking, like, they were. Type poles, yeah, maybe, maybe that's but, but just been. They're quite thick, apparently, these hot poles. But it grew up gruesome, an eight year old girl, to have her head decapitated. She must have screamed at the time, but it was a, rem a remote area, I'm guessing. Sad thing is, not all of her is here. They never found all of her. Which is quite so, sad. Yeah. But um, yeah, obviously, the local area was absolutely rocked by this whole. Thing. I mean, there'd never been a m murder here. Not before. like, not like that, I imagine. No. Earlier today, we had the tractor out, as you saw, and we've come back from Sweet Fanny Adams' grave in Alton, and now that the grass is dry, it can be cut, and I think we've got the, uh, the rotavator on the back of this, so it's actually gonna churn up the, um, the soil, so it's not just gonna be cut, it's just actually gonna be rotavated, as far as I'm uh, understanding. And Julia, and Ian are up the other end of the field because Ian's very kindly offered to allow us to do some experiments on the land. So what we're thinking, as far as I'm aware, and I'm going to go up and double check this, is that we have a bit of meadow land where we're going to grow some meadow and then we're going to grow some heritage wheat. Obviously we've got to source the seeds for all of this, but if we can have enough wheat to make a loaf of bread at the end of it this year, that'd be fantastic. Let's go and see what the deal is. So I think what we do then, Julia, I think if, if you, you know, I think we'll go and put some trees up the top and we can mm -hmm. grow some woodland up there. We can fantastic, start growing yeah. it for your own firewood. Wonderful. And then you obviously we're gonna today we're gonna obviously rotate this up with you and yeah. we're gonna see if we can get that and throw some mm. wildflowers in there. So right. the end section is gonna be for trees. For trees, yeah. So this section here we're gonna turn into the meadow flowers. That's right, yeah, exactly. That's and right, then yeah, we'll put the Get um, another wheat. experiment for Richard. Richard's going to grow his wheat. Heritage wheat, yeah. And then of course we've got the living hedge down there. Oh yeah, and the fruit. With, with fruit, hedge, fruit. see if we can grow down edible, there. Edible forest. Just a edge, trial then. until you get your land. Perfect. All right. Couldn't okay. ask for anything better, no. could you? Exactly. No, it's right. I'm, it's I'm hoping that the, uh, the fruit trees, if we... Well, my mate that we've been past today them. has got a fruit tree nursery out there. Oh, nice. So uh, we should have to go and have a nap with him, won't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they, they'll be trans I think you might be a sweet talking more than I can. Well, this... There he is. He's just got on the just got on the tractor. He's going to work out the rotavator for me. Yes, he's, I don't think he's actually used the rotavator before. This is a great opportunity, isn't it? It's so kind of Ian to allow us to do some experiments on his land. I don't think he's really doing very much with it, so it's it's great for him too yeah, to yeah. see us um, experiment and great for the viewers. Yeah, and hopefully we'll learn some things that we can take on to the next next stage. So let's Ultimately. see if he can work out how this rotavator works. Sorry. I said. So we had a bit of trouble with getting the blades low enough. Ian's not used this before, so 
I just simply said why don't we use this upper and lower handle to raise or lower the blades so he's got off to get a hammer to do something else but I've worked out that if you do it this way like that that lowers that temperature has dropped and we have gained some more clothes on our bodies. <laughs> we are staying the last night now. It's been an eventful day as you've seen. We've done things. Lots of things. We've got the second night in Ian'sfield. Near population Liss. currently still two. Yes, earlier the population it depopulated, yeah, didn't it? The human it? population dropped to zero. As we vacated hours. to Alton as you saw. So it's been over too quickly. It has. And um, but, but it's not surprising really. We've set up some interesting things in the field, as you saw. We will be back to maintain the field, Ian's field, with the meadow, the heritage wheat. Uh, so and the fruit forest. And the oh yes. So what's this about a fruit forest? Well, I have this lovely idea that uh, of having fruit trees. Well. Food, yes, you're going food, to plant food, fruit trees. Yes, food forest. So it's any any tree that produces food. fruit. Yes, you're going to plant them fruit, here. Fruit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll plant them here in the in a hedgerow. In a hedgerow. Um, that hopefully I should be able to still tran you know take out and transplant to wherever I want to later on. Fantastic. So you'll have to keep watching um, these videos, obviously, because uh, this is a long ongoing project. Long term. But that's it for our two days. I hope you've enjoyed watching our crazy antics. Big thank you, obviously, to goes to Ian for the use of his field. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to and the Ricky. Use of his tractor and, and everything he's done with us. A big thanks to Ricky for the use of his tent, which I think just see you edge, might think. just see there, um, which we will be packing up in the morning. So sorry if it's soaking wet, because it was soaking wet this morning. It's going to be. Yeah. And. Um, Thanks to all the patrons who support us. And don't forget, if you would like to keep your patronage going, it means that we'll be able to get out and do more of these things throughout the year. Quite. So, thank you, Julia. Otherwise, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Pleasure. Till then, toodles. Right, last one back to the van, isn't it? <laughs>